Hi, hope you're all doing well. Um, that uh, I think these are making sense to these lectures. Uh, this one is a little bit interesting. I, I just want to talk about um, just kind of some ideas on how you'll be thinking about a new business, a new country. How can you expand there in, in the project you'll be doing soon? So I just give you a, a few quick ideas on on uh, on that on ideas for expanding business. Kind of what to think about, what to look for. It's it's going to be simple because I think it is simple. Uh, it, it's it's simpler than we make it out to be sometimes. The hard part is the funding, the, the actually doing it. But getting an idea for a business and thinking about what what are the important things to address are uh, are not as hard as we sometimes make it out to be. The technical ele elements of implementation, uh, development, growth, you know, building those things are harder. But the idea uh, is not always as difficult as we make it out to be. So let's look at that really quickly. Please do. Uh, pull up the slides on ideas for expanding business, and uh, we'll look at those as we as we go along with this. First, I want to say that uh, when we look at the slide uh, two there, that um, th this is really a key focus on uh, for a key driver for business success. It's very simple. Uh, you have you're in a company, and, you, and that your company has certain strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats, etc. You have a certain dynamic, but basically, what is your what are your company's strengths? And what is the passion, and what is the the, the awareness of, of of who and what you are, etc. But basically, look at just passion and strengths. If you are trying to build a new business in a new country, is is that in line with the strengths that your company has? Do they have what it takes to do that? Is there a track record? Is there a history? Is there proof of commitment in terms of uh, investment, management, focus, etc.? That that's where the strengths lie. And then is there a passion for it? Do you really want to do it? Is it because it's not going to be easy? Is there corporate passion? Is there individual passion? Is there a desire? You probably put those two things together. Is there a true desire to do it? Because if it's you kind of do it halfway, it's not going to work. And do you have the strengths and resources and capacity based on the history, track record, etc., to get it done? And then you want to figure out what do other people care about? In other words, what will they buy? What will they pay for? And where those things come into uh, uh, overlap and where there's a convergence there, that's where you want to be. In other words, you want your company's strengths, the passion, the commitment to match what people want to buy. It sounds simple, but a lot of times people will do something different. They, they know what they want to do. They know what they want to sell and they know what they can sell. They know what they're strong. They think that's enough. And then on the other side, people just don't want to buy it. On the other hand, you know, people want something. There's a demand. The company isn't really uh, set up to address that demand. So they try to address a different demand, hoping for whatever that is going to be successful. You want to be uh, as sure as you possibly can be that what your company can, will, and wants to do is the same thing that people can will want to buy. It sounds simple, but it, it um, and it is. But that's uh, something to really focus on. The next slide there is is just basically the strengths, passion, business drivers plus the usefulness equals success. You want to it's very similar to the last slide. Basically, you want to take what your strong, what your, your your company can do well, what they've proven they can do well, what there's a real passion for, and, and understanding the business drivers. Business drivers are basically the kind of things that if you flick a switch here, it happens here. They're the things that make it happen. A company will will when we we've seen that in a business viability assessment. Uh, previously in the, in the first couple uh, lectures, and we'll go back to that for your project. But basically, it's vital that a company understands who and what they are strength-wise. They have a passion for it, and they understand the things that make the business work. It can be price, location, quality, uh, style, any number of things, but those things have to be well understood. Then you have to be sure it's useful to your buyer, and that will usually uh, be leads to success. So you think about what, what what's your product or service, what you want to sell, are, are people willing to pay for it, and then how are you going to get paid? And this is uh, becomes increasingly important as you move outside of the United States. Is that how do you get paid? How is the money paid? How, how do they is the actual mechanism for getting paid? How do you account for that revenue in a in a foreign location? How is it distributed locally? Can you how do you repatriate an income? And how do you reinvest earnings? There are other elements too, but basically. You want to know uh, how how are these people? How my product? Uh, you know how do people pay for it? And then how do I ever get that money? And through what accounting process does it have to pass through in order for us to achieve that? And again, how can you invest it, etc.? That that's, uh, again it seems simple, and it is. But those are the vital things to think about. Um, when you come, when you think about what how to come up with a business idea, where do business ideas come from? Uh, and and a lot of times they in a, in a big company in, in a smaller 
company, it's one thing, and individually it's another thing, but in a big company, there are a couple things that happen. It can be your overall company mission and vision. That's a, basically established as something you see that our company expands. We grow, we do, some, we do this. Um, and, and so sometimes you think, well, it's, it's easy to see why we're expanding into this market because we always do. We've, done, we've expanded other markets and that's the way this company works. Sometimes it's brand new and, and you don't have that to uh, rely on. There's a track record in history, goes both ways. If you've never grown overseas before, yeah, it's a different from a company that's done it many times. Either way, you have to address. You can't take for granted what you've done in the past, but also there's a huge amount of experience that you can leverage from having done it that a new, uh, a new mark, a, a company going to a new market uh, for the first time may not be uh, have it available. What's the infrastructure like in your company? Do you have the system, technology, capacity? to grow into another place. Uh, if you don't have that, you have to build it first. If your systems are, are weak already, imagine if you can stretch them across border. If, you're, if, you're, if you've developed, a, your technology is adequate for what you do here, but doesn't account for multi-currency and multi, uh, uh, you know, other accounting preferences and differences, et cetera, overseas, you're gonna have to fix that before you do that. And what's your capacity? You know, how, what's your management capacity, your, your, your human capital? Can you do it? What's your borrowing capacity? What's your funding uh, depth? All the different things that factor in to that, and then your overall strategy. And then, in general, what you want to do is, uh, is, is, is uh, when you think about why would we do that, you want to take advantage of certain things, inefficiencies. If you can see something that isn't working very well, that's an opportunity. You can fix what's wrong. Uh, if there's a new technology that you have that you can apply, or a new technology that you can you, that you can obtain that can drive decision making, um, a changing space. Sometimes uh, the market. I mean, not sometimes. It always is changing, but sometimes it changes enough. Like perhaps you've had there have been regulatory prohibitions to foreign expansion in a country for many many years. All of a sudden, a new government comes in and they open up the market because they found out that. Um, the, the over an over uh, protective government and an over involved government uh, agency is, is actually limiting growth and they realize that you know we've got to open this up a bit that happens a lot and you got a window of opportunity that has not been there before you've been looking at that market for years this hasn't been right all of a sudden you can work there and you take advantage of that so this spin off or a side project you you have a certain manufacturing capacity of of uh, wheelbarrows and then you see in another country they don't have wheelbarrows or there's a little bit of a tweak they like wheelbarrows a certain way and you can make those differently or maybe the, what you have uh, can be spun off there you think about like a, a television sitcom you know, we have the main characters and then some of these characters really are strong they, they deserve their own uh, own thing that happens in, in business all the time where a manufacturing thing where you you have a range of products all of a sudden these pr products are just perfect for that economy there and they can be actually stars in that economy and we can leverage them and be primary uh, factors there. Uh, maybe they're secondary or, or tertiary uh, types of things you build or make in, in your home country, but they can really be very leveraged, uh, very strong there. So a lot of companies have a whole range of products and services, a lot of different things they have, and you can see where's the best fit to take advantage of the inefficiencies. Uh, maybe there's something new in the technology area or just something that you, know, you have, so why not uh, uh, take advantage of, of its popularity in a new market? And finally, a quick thing on just you know really wonder always think about what people want you know never get uh, as a, in your business away from the consumer the consumers the it's everything is is based on what people want to buy uh, you can sell you can develop you can do all kinds of stuff but if people don't want to buy it you really have an issue so uh, you know even uh, the biggest company in the world when it gets right down to it you know you have to think about what do people want what do the buyers want and people want they want love they want money acceptance free time and other things you may think about. And they want less stress, conflict, hassle, uncertainty, and other things. But it can be, and, and it can be, you can apply fashion that way, you can play cars, you can apply washing machines. If you think about, you know, what frees my time up? What makes it easier for me? What, what is a status type thing? What creates, what's less of a hassle? What, what, you know, those sorts of things. That's where your consumer driven businesses are really all about. And, you think about is it really all about the value helping people and a lot of times it is and so what i wanted to emphasize i'm not saying this is for every single thing but you don't want to get away from that uh and and all the more so in today's economy of the, of the uh, digital economy and also the social media elements if you're not making people happy everybody else is going to know about it and if you do, if you let down people disappoint them what you sell it's going to be well known around the whole world so you really want to think about the consumer the consumer is everything they're the ones that pay all businesses based on having people um, buy what you're trying to sell. 
So it's really important you focus on these things. So those are where your ideas come from. When you think about uh, what kind of uh, thing do I want in a, in a new country, it goes very, very basic to, to what do we do best, what can we do, do we understand the business, and then all the way through that to you know how are we going to pay, and also finally, are we really addressing what the consumer wants? Is that, and that should always be a question for you. We're going to go there and do this. Is that driven by manufacturing or somebody's desire to do that or because there's a real need either they have or that can be created by your product? Hope that makes sense. Uh, talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.